Beth Ann Bafudo. She was raised in Billings, Montana, and moved to Rapid City in 1990 with her husband, Thomas Bafudo. She has an undergraduate degree in business administration and a graduate degree in education administ administration, specializing in adult and higher education in research and writing. Beth Ann comes, a family, comes from a family of entrepreneurs, and she is passionate to help entrepreneurs who want the freedom to live their ideal life. She has been in the health and uh, she has been an independent contractor for the health and wellness industry for the last 25 years. With that, I give you Beth Ann. Good morning, boys. It sound like I'm on? No. No. Let me fix you. Can you hear me? No, I don't hear it. Not real well. Not real well? Talk loud. Talk the loud? On. I don't have a mommy voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You need to switch? <laughs> I did switch it, yeah, but it's time for me to develop a mommy voice, I guess. All right, so thank you for that great introduction, and uh, I get to do this while I'm talking. So I thought I'd share a little bit about my family. Uh, kind of tell you um, a little bit about my background and then why I do what I do and my passion. That's the plan for this morning and then you guys ask me questions, so I'm looking forward to that. So my family, as Melanie said, um, is full of entrepreneurs from the grandparent level as far back as I can remember. And so that's sort of in my blood, I would say. And um, I came from Billings where our family had a meat packing plant. So my history is I grew up on the kill floor, playing on the kill floor. <laughs> and uh, my little brother and I would try to ride hogs together out in the pens. You know, that's, that's my background. So uh, we moved from Billings. No, first of all, let me go back. So while I was in Billings, um, my, because we had a family business, we had the benefit of all getting employed in that family. So my father thought, oh, it'd be a great idea. This was pretty smart of him to put me in the position to where I learned every job in the office and I was called a vacation reliever, <laughs> which was really good for the company, but it was also really good for me because it got me a really good background about everything that happens in the office, from accounts payables, receivables, bills of lading for trucks, counting inventory in the freezers, you know, all of that kind of fun stuff. So, payroll, when I learned payroll in that company, it was pivotal for me because that's a hard position to fill. There's quite a bit to know to do payroll. And um, when the gal that did payroll got pregnant, started to have a family, they decided to just put me in that position permanently. So I did payroll for about three years. And the light bulb kind of went on. It's like, how come all these people that I'm writing checks for are making so much more money than I am? I, don't, I mean, you know, 100000 and I was making like 15 bucks an hour. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna go back to school and get an education, because I feel like I could do everything they're doing, but I don't have the credentials to allow me to do that. So I did get my undergrad in business, and um, my first job out of college was working for a computer company there. That sent me all over the United States to teach people how to use their computer software in their offices. So that was a pretty cool job. And so little girl out of Billings got out of Billings to, to see all these fun things. And of course, I always had to go to the mall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we moved from Billings to Rapid City. But in Billings, that company that I worked for had grown so fast, they doubled in one year, and they needed somebody in-house to train all their people. So they created an education department, and I was promoted into that department. So that's how I kind of got into the education side of business. And then when we moved to Rapid, I told my husband, I said, I can get a job anywhere, don't worry about it, I've done all these different things, you know, not a problem at all for me to find a job. But the Votech was looking for someone with business experience, to teach in their business department. And it just so happened here, I had just been put in charge of an education department, and I had all these hours in the field doing business. So that was kind of a shoe in to get a job at the Votech. And then when you work in education, it's kind of a cool thing, they pay for you to take more classes, then they pay you more because you have more education. So naturally, you, you get more education, so that's why I got my master's. 
And then when I had a master's degree, I was qualified to teach at NAU, qualified to teach at the college level, so I went to NAU. And on the side, began a business teaching people how to use computer software. So I have a little, little touch on entrepreneurship there. And then um, Black Hills Federal Credit Union was looking for somebody with a master's degree. And um, so I went to work for them in their training and development. I was as their coordinator for that department. Worked for them for about five years. But then I began to realize that the only reason I was there is because they provided health insurance. How many of you have been in that role? It's like, oh my gosh, you've got to have health insurance. If you're an entrepreneur, that's a bit of a struggle. Well, once I figured out, and I told my husband, if I can solve this problem, you know, I want to be self-employed. I want to work for myself. Because I had had issues with my health that were pretty severe and had had uh, them solved, really. Um, a good friend came to stay with us, and she looked 10 years younger. I hadn't seen her for 10 years. I was like, how does that happen? You know, and finally I just had to say, what are you doing? So then she said, well, let me tell you. And I was able to find a system that helped me to live my ideal life. So this system allowed me finally to get over life-threatening asthma. I had allergies. I was allergic to everything under the sun. Uh, I mean everything but bulgur, wheat, barley, and bananas. That's kind of where I was at. <laughs> just super sensitive. Not a good immune system going on there at all. Um, energy, I was just exhausted all the time. I have asthma really bad. I carried an inhaler and I used it at one time. I counted 18 times. So this was real life-threatening where my health was at that I've been restored from. So naturally I have a passion for helping people find their ideal life. They may be struggling with some of the things <coughs> that I struggled with. So as an entrepreneur, I think thousands of people are looking for what I've found. And as entrepreneurs, I think you guys would realize too, um, it's a really interesting model when you have a, found a problem and you have found a solution to that problem. So as entrepreneurs, that's what we do. We look for problems that need to be solved and then we come up with solutions for those problems. And in the world that we live in, there's some really epidemic problems, as I'm sure you're aware of, and it's not just the United States, but spreading into the world. We have problems with obesity, epidemic proportions to obesity, diabetes, UBS, not UBS, IBS, it's UBS, I don't know. Medical health services. <laughs> yeah. uh, cancer, you know, energy, lack of energy, hence, you know, everybody's got their morning coffee, and, and heart disease, all these things are going on. So if you can find a business that solves that, it's huge. And also an international business, one that is not limited to the domestic markets, Again, that's really, really a good thing. So as an independent contractor, I'm in the business of expanding business. I'm looking for people that, are, that want to live their ideal life, and I help them do that. And if you have a business that solves also all those headaches that you don't have to deal with legal issues, you don't have to find the product that you're providing, you don't have to do research and development, you know, these sorts of things as an entrepreneur, don't deal with administration, don't have to do payroll, you know, all, all of those things are hugely important. And uh, also tax law advantages. As someone with a business background, I realized that as an entrepreneur, there's some real tax law advantages that if you take advantage of them, you're really smart. And so what I have found is something that has tax deductible food. How would you like to have free food, you know, arrive at your door? Tax deductible food, also all your, any kind of expenses that regular people have, but you get to deduct them from your business, so you get to take your taxable income down with these expenses, like your car, uh, travel, you know, all the fun things you get to deduct from your income. Why not? Who wouldn't want to do that? Part of the ideal life. Now, my passion is helping people, but not only helping people, but then helping them help people. So Sherry, who is sitting several rows back, <laughs> has is one of the people that, I've been privileged to help. We have quite a few here in Rapid City, but Sherry herself has realized that if you let your body be a miracle, it's designed to be, things can happen. So you can't even recognize Sherry from her before picture. 70 pounds is huge to lose 70 pounds and then find all this health now. So naturally, um, Sherry's passion is now to help primarily in the field of healthy aging. She wants to help people not have to go to nursing homes, get to be active when you get older, be very vital. So her, one of her passions is also one of my passions now. <coughs> I look forward to meeting her. 
So my why, I thought I'd share with you my why. Why do I do this? Freedom, freedom to not have to work for others, freedom, time freedom, you know, you have the freedom to work from two o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the morning, whenever you want to work. And to help others who want their best life now. And I started to turn to my health around when I was 43. I'd just as soon help people do that before they get to be 43. So I have um, strong feelings about that. So now I have, my why is I now have a healthy weight. I don't think it's important to be skinny. I just think it's important to be healthy. And when you find that health, then you can have an athletic fun. Then because your knees don't hurt, your ankles don't hurt, you have the energy to do stuff. So uh, I play tennis as often as I can get people to play with me, as some of you know. It, it's just so fun. So having vitality, having well-being, you know, what is well-being? It's just the sense of happiness. And then slowed aging is huge also. In America, we have accelerated aging, and helping people slow their aging is huge for me. And also, residual, growing, lifetime, willable income that has no ceiling on it was something that really appealed to me as a business entrepreneur. So I have a passion in certain areas. Research, as Nolly said, was one of my specialties with my education. I love research. And when there's research being done and trusted solutions being found, I find that just fascinating. I love it. And we have also, I'm very passionate about, we have a 100-pound club, people that have lost over 100 pounds. Um, the most is 450 pounds, which you might find hard to even imagine. This woman weighed 600, 600 pounds and has lost 450 pounds. Also, every year in the People magazine, I don't know if you've ever seen, they write up uh, people that have lost over half their body weight. There's articles on that, the first of every year. <laughs> so like if they were 600, now they're 300. If they were 400, now they're 200, whatever. And there's even husband and wife teams, you know, that have lost weight together. It's pretty really exciting. And we had two people written up in the People magazine last year. I'm also extremely passionate about athletes. Athletes already know their body is their tool. And if they will put really good, wholesome food in, then they can perform at their best. So I love talking to athletes, and I love talking to people who then become athletes that wouldn't have been able to be athletes before. So that's really, really fun. Financial freedom, I have a passion for that. Why? If you're financially free, what can you do with that money? You know, Money just makes you more of what you already are. So if you're a giver, you can give more if you're financially free. So. Um, and if you can pass that on to your family, and if you can reach people in their youth that don't want to, like, owe oh, their soul, you know, to the company store, remember that song, that was song, <laughs> then why not help the youth do this, too? I mean, I'm really passionate about that. So entrepreneurs in general, I like to call them the unemployable, people that would not work for someone else, <laughs> ever, again. And uh, I especially am passionate toward our military, our veterans, our police. I should have put um, fire, fire department people on there. Anyone that is giving their life so that we have freedom, they have a ton of stress in their life. And so if they put really good nutrition in their bodies, it can mitigate that stress. It can help them with that stress. So um, I'm, I'm very passionate about that. And then, of course, the healthy aging part. We don't want to end up in nursing homes, like we said. And, I'm amazed when you talk to medical people these days, they say, well, bring your list of prescriptions. It's like everybody's got one. It's nice not to have one. So are you living your ideal life? That's my presentation. Deanna Beck, a character coach. I've known Beth for quite a while. Uh, didn't know your master's in education. So how do you, when you're approaching people for your business opportunity, um, I don't even know how to word this. Uh, a lot of people don't have that education. Some of them just have a high school degree. How do you uh, communicate with them that they can do what you do without the experience that you have? One of the things I learned in, when I was in education that was one of my favorite things I learned was not how smart are you, but how are you smart? Everyone is gifted. And if you can find the areas where people have their strengths and concentrate on that, I think that's really huge. And also, I think to edify people so that they realize they are smart in certain areas. Because a lot of times, well, like when I worked with the people at the Votech, many of them did not even have a high school degree. 
diploma, and they had kind of found themselves and come back to school, realized that they wanted to make more of their lives, and so they came to the vocational school to do that. And their, their self-esteem began to improve. And, and so edifying that, watching people grow, I think is, is just huge. If you have your self-esteem, you can do anything. Thanks. Good question. Hello, I'm Saeed with Shield Financial. I just want to confirm in uh, my understanding, is this a is this kind of a franchise or a multi-level marketing kind of concept, or do you want to elaborate on that? And if it is, how do you kind of get out of that, the general mold of what some people have assumptions about that, if it is? Um, good question. We have teams. You know, I'm in the business of expanding business. We have teams. This is, a, this is not... Um, multi-level, it's sort of like continual level. It never, ever ends. There's no ceiling, there's no end. Um, and, and maybe some people, I, I think we're getting past that. I mean, it's huge what's happening in the industry these days. So um, years ago, it used to be people didn't understand, you know, what was legal, what wasn't. This is just a distribution system, really, is what it is, where you don't have to do a lot of the work that you don't want to do. You just find people that are looking for what you have. Find people that are like you. You know, make friends. Enjoy. It's, it's a good business. I have a question about them. Um, I'm Leah with Twilight First Aid and Safety. Um, there's, how, how, have you, how has your company contended with this push toward unprocessed food? I know there's there's so many diets, there's so much out there, but I know that one of the trends is to eat whole food, not processed. Has that been an issue in your business? I think there is a big difference in the definition of processed foods versus whole foods, uh, versus uh, foods that have been dried, let's say. It's a whole food, but it's been dried. That's different from um, foods that have all kinds of additives and chemicals and you know the processing so that they'll stay forever on the shelf and they also won't digest going through your body. I mean, it's, um, having research and development that uh, that actually finds a way to make foods that really work in your body, and we have um, research to prove it. Research medically medically published uh, information about people that we've helped and and um, how if you reach a certain level of health, you can stay there and just keep getting healthier and healthier and healthier. And the more you know about what's happening with our whole foods, you know, they said years ago, you have, you, what we used to be able to get in spinach, now it takes a whole wheelbarrow full of spinach. So the nutrition is not in our foods like it used to be because we don't have the farming practices we should have because we have a lot of, there's a lot of toxicity going on because we're trying to, I don't know, have you guys ever had a garden? You try to try to grow without putting a bunch of chemicals on there to keep the bugs off. It's an effort, so I understand. But you don't want those chemicals in your body. Right? I mean, who wants chemicals in their body? There's <laughs> chemicals in the food we eat, the air we breathe, the, the carpet we're walking on, and it's, uh, our bodies become toxic. That's part of the problem. So I have a question for you, Bethann. I'm Melanie Torno with Torno Mediation and Mental Health Services. Um, can you share with us one of your successes and struggles as an entrepreneur, and how did you celebrate your success, and how did you overcome your struggle? Boy, I wish I had that question earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spotlight. Well, I think one of the successes as an entrepreneur is uh, what I said originally was I had to figure out what I was going to do about health insurance. That was a huge success because if I hadn't found that answer, I wouldn't have been able to take this step. So that's maybe not the kind of thing you're looking for, but um, but I think that is really huge. If somebody wants to be self-employed, they've got to deal with that. Uh, struggle? Struggle. Years ago, it used to be the issues of people thinking network marketing was um, um, a scam. That was a, a struggle. I feel like now, um, because this is a, a world 
um, business. We're in like 17 countries now. Other parts of the world have discovered this type of business more than we have here in the United States. For instance, the most recent one we went into is Korea. Korea, <laughs> Korea is amazing. Korea is amazing. These, these people really know what they're doing. It's like they have to. And their attitude is like, you know, you only get 80 years on this earth. You've got to make the most of it. You've got to do it now. They, they carry two cell phones. And it's just, I, I guess that's one of the successes, I think, that I love is um, being exposed more to in the international world and what's happening out there and realizing, especially coming from Montana, little old girl from Montana, you know, getting, getting out to really be exposed to what's going on in the world and um, the successes all over the world and, and then you can capture those to be yours. I bet you wanted something a little more personal, but, but you know, for someone that just thought the most exciting thing in the world was to go to the mall, <laughs> I mean, that's just a whole lot better when you realize that the exciting thing in the world is what are other people in the world doing and how do we fit into that picture and how can we help not only people right here but, but um, you know, get on LinkedIn and search for entrepreneurs uh, in Spain, you know, that kind of thing. It's just really fun to see what's going on in the world and become a part of that. What's something that you believed in your business to be true for a long time, but then have recently changed your mind about? I, and you all probably have heard, 95% um, of businesses fail in the first five years. Um, and I, I know there's another statistic, but I, I don't know how many, you know, what percentage makes it beyond five years, and it's just huge. But what I've, what I've come to learn is that if everything's in place, if there's integrity in the business, if you do everything right, I don't think you can fail. I don't think that 95% statistic has play in that. So those things are huge. Mike Dupree with Ross Woodworks. Who's your ideal customer and how do you get in front of them? My ideal customer, play tennis. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I I was uh, 50 pounds heavier than I am now, so I really do like to help people that are struggling with their weight and teach them you don't have to be on every diet under the sun for the rest of your life, and you can you can enjoy the rest of your life more. But my ideal customer now, I think, is um, athletes because athletes already know that it's really important what they put in their body, and I, I'm just inspired by that. <laughs> Monique Stevens with SDSU. Um, I'm wondering, how, how do you market your business, and how do you attract customers, and then how do you keep them? So how, so how you market your business, they say become a walking billboard. You know, if you're loaded with energy, that's a really good thing, become a walking billboard. Um, just like to make friends that like to do what I like to do, sports. Um, I like to go to networking things just because I like to make friends. So you make, make friends, you find the people that are looking for what you've got. You don't have to be trying to push what you've got toward people, but if people are looking for what I have, then I have an answer for them. And if they're passionate about finding that answer, then they are going to stay being a customer when they realize they've found the solution that they're looking for. But not everybody's there. You know, people, a lot of people are in denial. They don't, they don't feel they can do this, they, they think it's going to be hard, which it's not. The truth is when your body gets the nutrition it needs, things get a lot easier than you'd ever think that it would. So when people discover that, I think then they want that for the rest of their lives. And, you know, if you feel better, you don't, you don't want that to go away. I think sometimes maybe people do um, try for a while, because I'll meet people, they say, oh, I tried that for a while, and then, but then they relapse, you know, it's like you've got to find a solution for the rest of your life, not not like diets. People um, you know, they lose they gain weight, they lose weight, they gain weight, they lose weight. And this is not just a diet by any means. This is a lifestyle of, of um, energy and you know, go get them for the rest of your life. Am I making this clear? I don't. Know. Everybody thinks it's a diet program. We did. Uh, Isogenics did start in the weight loss industry. Um, well, I think 75% of the people in America are overweight. 
So obviously that is a huge area, but then we've expanded into the pro athletes where we've got like the um, golfers that are wearing a nice jacket <coughs> because you know, they want to be as strong as they can be to perform the best at their sport. And I uh, know tennis pros that, that do this as well. It's, um, and foot, I know all you football people, if I was just a football person, I could give you a bunch of names. My husband's like, tell them all the football people. I like, I don't know them. I don't know their names, I'm sorry. But uh, I like the athletic side of things really well. Uh, Cecil, I'm the Farm Bureau of Financial Services. Um, so do you have a support group with all your customers? Do they meet like on a regular basis? Do you have counseling sessions? How is that? How do you continue to support your customers, your clients that you have? You know, in this day and age, there's so much available online. There's a lot of training online. But we have a couple of teams here in town that we've all, we've all blended together and worked together. So support groups are, are local, you know. Um, but, but really, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. You know, if I found someone that really had some goals and they felt really strong about it, then I would be sure they felt really strong about it, strong enough to commit to texting with me every day and saying, I'm on track, things are going well, how are, you know, how are things going? So personal support, at least for their first 30 days. And then, then they know to do the same for the next people that they help, that same kind of personal support. So one-on-one -on -one is huge in this to get started. But we do have a lot of team support as well. In fact, our team is now made number one team, which Sherry doesn't. Maybe Sherry knows this, I don't know, but the team that we're on is number one, which is huge, huge. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of people at the top buying for who's making the most money. And the ones making the most money, it's just really encouraging to see they're like adopting children and they're, you know, they're giving back. It's, it's really an awesome, awesome uh, bunch of people that are attracted to doing this. So then, I have a question. Um, you're a success story with Isogenics. What goes wrong with people who try it? In, 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 in other words, they try to do what you're doing and they don't succeed. And what are some things that would cause that to happen? I don't know that they, I think finding the, okay, first of all, if you, if you have um, somebody that is coaching you that can help you and you, you, you do this together, that's the idea, you know, come along. Um, like a mother raising her children, sort of thing. Because <laughs> these are my children. <laughs> so, um, so helping people. Uh, but a lot of people, they're, they're scared to share anything. But when, but there's kind of a magical thing that happens when somebody loses 40 pounds. It's like everybody wants to know what they're doing, why, how, you know. So um, it just, it just happens that way. Of course, if you don't have any weight to lose, and you just feel good, and you have so much energy, you don't know what to do with it, people are bound to ask you about that, too. Now, how come you're always so happy? How come you have so much energy? What are you doing that's improved your tennis game from a <laughs> level 2.5 to 3.5? You know, not everybody knows what that means, but you're so much faster. Gosh, you're really fast on the court. How'd you get to where those legs start to move when you can really run? You know, things like that. I have another question for you about that. So you've been in this industry for 25 years. So, and coming from a family of entrepreneurs, what, if you knew everything you knew now, what would you change in your journey? What would you go back and change to make it more of a smooth journey instead of little bumps in the road? Well, I've always felt like I wish I would have started doing this younger. You know, you get in this traditional career path where you think you're going to get an education, you're going to go to school, then you're going to get a job, and that's what you're going to do. Even if you come from a family of entrepreneurs, you still feel, I did, felt motivated to get this education. I thought that was how I was going to get ahead in the world. But now, now I realize, because I help people that don't have that education, that it takes more in what's, what's inside you, I think. The, uh, the passion, the energy, the never give up, the... Uh, that entrepreneurial spirit is what will move people. I had more than an education. That's what I think. It's almost, is that inborn? I don't know. So, I don't, I don't regret my education. Um, 
but sometimes I feel like I'm overeducated for what I do. I don't think it's, I mean, I'm sure there's value there. I don't need to put it down by any means, but I think some of the value I used to feel was more of what it did for your self-esteem. You can't take somebody's education away from them. But, but I wish I would, and I, I would love to find people that are in the 18 to 35 year old range that want to be set free in their life, that don't want to owe their soul to the company store, that want to have a different kind of life, uh, like missionaries that want to go be a missionary, but they don't want to ask people for money they, if they could support that endeavor themselves. <coughs> that sort of thing. I, I wish I would have started younger. But I didn't really find it because I didn't find my health until I was 43. You know, if, I had, if I hadn't had all those health problems. <coughs> Sure, I would have started younger. I have another, I have another question for you. Um, what do you see as the growth potential for your um, business, and what do you need to, um, from like your team and from Isogenics, to be able to continue to grow or to reach the goal that you would like? Uh, the first goal big goal is to find 10 people that want to do what you want to do as part of your team. Five, maybe initially, and then 10. But that would put me at the top of what we call our um, ranks, the ranks. But, um, so what was the, what do I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you're making me think about Can you remember yeah. your question? I can't. <laughs> what will it take to grow, I think? Yeah, what do you, what you need from your team and from your business to be able to, to be your end goal? The, um, to grow, which is easier, is simply time. Um, time to time to grow. The, the people that started with this company 14, 15 years ago, their whole family is in, in the top um, person I'm thinking of is 90 years old. He started when he was 75. And uh, his family, I believe, have, I mean, I hate to talk dollars, you know, but I think his whole family's made like $80 million. It's kind of like a big, it's the food, it's a, instead of going to the grocery store, the groceries come to your house and everybody eats. And over time, you just keep sharing with more people and sharing with more people. And this is a, um, have you ever heard of this? that if you take a dollar and you double it every day, would you rather have a million dollars or would you rather have a dollar that doubles every day for 30 days? Dollar. The dollar, <laughs> right. By I think the 28th day, it has doubled to a million dollars. So our way our team works is you share with two people, they share with two people, they share with two people. So you double, you double, you double, you double, you double. And when that goes on into infinity, there is no ceiling on the opportunities. And now, especially with the internet and how you can expand into new countries, I mean, there's people hungry for, for this, hungry for, the, for nutrition, but also just hungry for freedom and uh, the lifestyle that they can have as entrepreneurs. Since you're talking about money, does someone who wants to sell isogenics have to put in money initially to get started, just as somebody would buy a business? Is there a startup cost? You know, people can start as customers. We're 85% customers and be customers for the rest of their lives or whatever. They can just be customers. Uh, if you're going to then want to share with people and be in the position to where you make commissions, then there's a, a minimum amount that you would need to purchase every month. And it's and you're simply rerouting your grocery money to these groceries, so it, it's like not really a big issue at all. What it takes. It's almost like too easy to get started. So if you'd rather I tell you you're gonna have to spend twenty thousand dollars to get started and that's more believable. But if not, you just simply reroute the the food you're eating now to food that you know is proven to be clean and that athletes even like it and you know it'll, it'll take care of a lot of your cravings and, and energy and sleep and issues like that. You just reroute your grocery money and then others can do the same.
So I purposely put my passion back up on the screen because this is where I would ask for help from you all. I am, I am passionate about people that need to lose 100 pounds you know, or more. If you have people, friends that you know are considering like gastric bypass, please send them my way. They don't have to go through that kind of pain. This is easier than one would think. So I'm looking for people that are struggling with their weight, the like that magic 40 pounds thing, like I said. Um, athletes that really want their performance to be at the top of their game, they are already maybe at level nine, they want to be at a 10, or they want to be at a 10 plus. I've got, I've got answers for them. Um, people looking for financial freedom. Um, the military, I would especially hunger to help people that are in our military, um, the spouses that are staying at home, while their, their spouse is broad and all the stress that they have in their life, you know, our veterans, I'd love to help our veterans be healthier. You hear about the issues sometimes in, in medical for veterans. Um, people that need to be healthy, the police, they need to be strong. You know, I want to, I want to, uh, I have answers for people like that. And so if you can refer those kinds of people to me, that would be my big ask. The, the healthy aging thing, like I said, um, our Charlie the Butcher, he is 85 years old now, and he started when he was 70. If I'm getting my numbers right, I think he started when he was 72 or something like that. Um, we don't have to go through this aging process. Let's let's be able to <coughs> chase after our grandkids until we're like 85, maybe 100. So it's those my passion. You know, send people to me. You know, if you would, where that fit into my passion, that would be my.